So if you haven't been frustrated inside of Tableau, when I get to kind of midway inside here, I've got a challenge for you. And I want to see if anybody who didn't raise their hand, if they can answer how to do it. All right? So I'm Joe Mako. I've been using Tableau since version 3, uh, helping people out in the community every chance I get. And uh, right now I'm working with Gataglyph, which is a consulting firm. Uh, we're able to take care of the pizzas and drinks for you guys tonight. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions with Tableau, more than welcome to reach out to me. I'd love to help you. All right. So we're going to be talking about shaping your data for a better experience inside of Tableau. Because for me, I think that's the key for Tableau, is your data structure and contents determines your capabilities inside of Tableau. If you do not have the ability to transform your data prior to Tableau, Tableau is going to be sucky experience. It's going to be hard to use, you're going to be frustrated, and it's not going to flow. But if you can transform your data prior to Tableau, you can set yourself up for success. You can have that great experience of a cycle of visual analytics and dragging and dropping things and getting directly to the answer that you want to get. And so if you've heard me present before, uh, you know, I've got my three main things. Uh, number one is the four pull types, knowing whether it's dimension or measure, or continuous or discrete. And these things are regardless of what your data is. That Tableau is data agnostic. Now, if, uh, now, I know a lot of people here are repeats. This is what I talk about every single time, so I'm not going to dwell on it here. If you do want me to dwell on it more, uh, when I'm done embracing asking questions, we can dive into these deeper. Okay? Next one that I have is the records to marks. Being aware of what does Tableau do visibly in the background to the result of the query that Tableau sends to the data source. Is it duplicating the data? Is it pivoting the data? What is it doing to go from those query results to drawing the marks on the canvas? That's another thing I've covered in depth in the previous talks. If we need to cover it again for new people, raise your hand and dive into it. And the final one was level of calculation knowing where this computation is happening, but more importantly, where, but when, in the order of operations that Tableau happens, I've got my three main uh, record, which happens before aggregation, and then your aggregation, and table calculations. Really, this list of three items, I can expand it out to 100 different steps of what Tableau does, and a lot of it's not really well documented. The only way to get to it is through trial and error, and sometimes when Tableau releases a new version, they change how things are evaluated in the flow. So it's constantly evolving. But here, the one that I want to talk about today is this fourth one of granularity. That this is, I think, really important for Tableau or any type of analysis. That being aware of your granularity helps you figure out how do I want to solve this or how do I want to talk about it? How do I want to think about it? that for granularity inside of Tableau, there's two things to be aware of. One is the granularity of the data. What is your underlying data? And inside of it, what records, what does a unique record represent? You know, it could represent a person. It could represent an event. It could represent all sorts of different things. But having an awareness of what is your data is really important, because that's your starting point. And then the next granularity is what do you want to mark to represent? So when you're aggregating your data, you're picking your dimensions, you're picking your granularity, and so being aware of what's that granularity in your view. And these two keys are really the prime importance for using Tableau. But this granularity here that I talked about goes all the way back to these four pull types. And you heard me talk about before, it's this dimension versus measure is the key awareness to Tableau. Everything inside of Tableau depends on your dimension pulls. Whether you're doing table calculations or data blending, everything is based on your dimension pulls. And what your dimension pulls do is they set the granularity of your view. All right? And so let's dive right into this. So I want to go quickly through this so that we can save a lot of time for questions. But here is an initial challenge. I don't know if you can see this too well. What I've got is I've got a data table on one side and a chart on the other side. That data table is the starting point of the data that we want to connect to. And then on the other side is the result that we want to generate. Now, if you look at it, you can see we've only got about 20 rows of data in that data table. But over on the other side, there's a whole lot of records there. You've got a bunch of sevens and sixes, and these things are all repeated. 
that this is more than 20 marks on a canvas. So somehow we had to create more records. Now, we've got a lot of options for where we can create more records. We could create it through custom SQL. We could create it through data authentication. We could create it through some other tool or what. So for you guys, for the people who were not frustrated with anything inside of Tableau, if we were connected to this data source, how would you go about taking this to create that final chart that I've got here? Anybody have any ideas? That there's really there's no wrong answers at this point. But I want to explore a couple of different initial thoughts. Okay, that's a valid answer. Okay, and so I can show you what happened when somebody did that. Is uh, Keith had this question and he posted it in the Tableau form. And then he said, all right, hey, Sean Walmart, Jonathan Dromey, Joe Mako, how do you do this? And so Jonathan and I went back and forth with them and we applied on the form, saw the form, and we gave him a couple of different options. Uh, Keaton came in and we gave another option. So he's got three potential answers to his question by putting them on the Tableau form. So this goes right to Matt Schumacher's quest, uh, presentation about community, that there is a real community here for Tableau users that you post it to Twitter, you post it to the forum, you post it to Reddit, whatever. There's going to be people out there that want it because we care about this and we want to be here for you guys. So, all right, so that's that one. Who else has got another option for how would you take this table and turn it into this chart? Where would you start? Anybody? How do you make more records? Like, because let's let's even try it, okay? So if I connect up to the data here, let's go to new tableau. And let's see, let's grab the CSV down here, diet. And let's just try a couple of things. Let's experience that frustration that is tableau. That alright, so I've got a date field. I try to bring the date field out here as a continuous. And okay, so I got a couple of things. I bring out number of records. Uh, that doesn't look quite so useful to me because what I want to have is some type of running sum of this. So I can do a running sum on there. Let's see, the table count, running total. Well, that kind of gets me kind of there, but now I need to subtract out whatever they have the uh, departure date. And so now I've got when they arrived and when they departed. I want to effectively kind of overlap this and then subtract these two. And so this difference between these two things is kind of what I want to get. But what we're what we experience if you try to do this inside of Tableau is you'll run into brick wall after brick wall, where to get to this result, this data structure is not made. So really it's kind of a trick question that there is no good way to connect. So this is the raw connection that you get that result inside of that there's a number of ways that we can transform our data to do this. Now, again, if you want to go into more detail into uh, uh, how we did this, I'm going to kind of just jump through the solutions. But Keith put together a blog post where he explains the thought process. Because I got on with a screen share with them, and I walked them through this over one evening. And talked about we've got these patterns of data, whether it's kind of what you want to call it, a lookup table or observation where we have one record here per person, but then we have the time they arrive and the time they depart. And so we know this data structure isn't going to be able to generate us this kind of running count or active count in between how many days or how many people were active on any random day in between that. So what we can also do is we could duplicate the data, or we could transform it. We could turn it into two records per person where what we end up with is something more like this. I'm going to copy this, bring the tab, let's pull it down a little bit. And so we'll call all of these our arrivals. So I'm going to pay down through all of those. And another one for the and then paste it all again. So something like this is a duplicate of the data. And then off at this point, we can create a common date field that is just for the arrival dates and one for just the departure dates. And so that's another data structure here where now what we have is one record per transaction. 
And so this is a taller data structure. So for Tableau, the general rule of thumb is a taller data structure enables greater capabilities inside of Tableau. But still with this, if I were to connect to this inside of Tableau as is, I would have to jump through a lot of hoops. Now I've got one here that does that, and with this uh, either account or account join, either way here, where what I had to do to enable this was I had to do a bunch of different calculations. I had to uh, transform the date, I had to create this date shifted, so that if it was the ending date, it shifted backwards, so we didn't count them afterwards, we didn't count them on the right day, and then this count here, that based on whether they're arrival, we're going to increment it, or we're going to de-increment it. And so there's a lot of different ways that we can handle this. And then on top of that, I had to turn on data densification, with the show missing values, to densify the data, because if I turn that off, you know, now we get missing days in here, but we don't have all of the potential days. And that's not right. And so there's a lot of different ways that we can handle this. Another way that uh, uh, Keegan suggested was, well, you need to uh, join it with every potential day. If we look back here, he had written some uh, custom SQL to do that. But in order to do that, he had to have a list of all the potential days. Um, the way that I did it here was that similar to what I manually did inside of Excel, which was the duplication of it. And, but neither, so even with those, it's kind of hard to deal with because we've got to write custom SQL. And for me, I don't want to write custom SQL. So an answer that I turn to any time that I want to create a better experience inside of Tableau is going to be Alteryx. And with Alteryx, I can connect it to my data source. I format it so that I'm actually working with a big field here instead of some string. And then we can use a uh, generate records to generate all those records. So if I up configuration, I can write just a couple of formulas and say I want to go from the arrival date when it is less than departure date and add in each individual event. So we go from our 20 records, which is our data source, all the way up to uh, what we got here, 251 records. So we've got a record for each day that that person is there. So this is a case of preparing our data for Tableau to enable a better experience. So now with the data reshape, and I want to create that chart inside of Tableau. What do I need to do? Just bring out the date as a discrete, and then bring out the number of records, and then pull out the dynamic color shell, pull out the row shell, turn on your label, and rearrange the view. And so without restructuring your data for Tableau, you have to either do custom SQL or just jump through a bunch of hoops with calculations, or it's simply not possible. But with transforming your data prior to Tableau, with this awareness of what is your granularity represent, and then what is the granularity that you want to have at the end. In this case, my original data granularity was one record per person. What I wanted for a granularity to enable Tableau was one record per person and date. So now it's this combination of date and name that identifies a unique record. So with these more records in a taller data structure, we can then enable a better experience inside a Tableau instead of crazy frustration. Okay. So with that, I bring it over to questions. Now, Chuck is saying, like, doing things live, I'm more than happy to do anything live. If you can bring me up to a simple example, I can recreate it from Salesforce, and we can solve the problem right here. Or, if it's going to be a more involved process, you're welcome to send me an email, either joe at datablist.com or joemako at gmail.com, either one of those. I'm more than happy to help you out.